Hey guys, welcome back. Let's play Final Fantasy VI. Last time we saved Shadow from a giant behemoth. And in between times, and including the start of this episode, we've got a whole bunch of rages that we can now take a look at. Now that I've got the final one that I needed, which is the Rius, or you don't need a lot of them. Most of the ones I got aren't really necessary anymore. In fact, as long as you get the Tyrannosaur one, and the Prussian one, and the Osteosaur one, you don't really need many other ones. In fact, if you wanted to, you could stick with those three, Rodox and Marshall, and pretty much be fine for most of the game. You really don't need nearly as many as I've got, but I wanted to show some of them off to you because I think it's at least somewhat interesting. So let's find a battle around here to show off what, uh, what Ga can do here. Oh yeah, Ga's gone. Okay, we're back. Let's show off a few of Ga's new rages. Alright, so let's see here. We've already shown off Osteosaur. That's one of the important ones. The next one is Tyrannosaur. Tyrannosaur has probably your best multi-targeting attack, and that's a free Meteo spell. Meteo is absolutely fantastic, does lo boatloads of damage, as you can see. So yeah, you, you kind of want that one. That's why it's one of the most important ones. Tyrannosaur uh, has instant death protection. It's only weak to ice. Pretty powerful, aside from that. Uh, we showed off Nightshade already. I'll try and, you know, make some joke instances where we can try and show it off, maybe in some boss fights or something like that. Uh, let's see, what else do we get? Uh, Senior Behemoth. This is the undead variant of the Behemoth. Uh, this one uh, is undead, absorbs poison, will be weak to fire and pearl. Um, unfortunately, he's not going to show it, but it casts fire three. What else do we have here? Um, Harpy Eye. This one, well, we kind of can see what we're dealing with here. This one has uh, auto float and we'll use the arrow spell. It's weak to wind, it has instant death protection. Uh, the arrow spell is kind of interesting because it's basically as powerful as a level three elemental spell. And sadly, because there's only one enemy and it dies really quickly, I'm not gonna be able to show off a lot of these spells, but at least I'll get a chance to talk about them. Uh, Rios that we got at the start of the episode. This one uses Surge. Surge is a ice elemental attack that does a decent amount of damage. Not as much as some of the other ones. Um, it has instant death protection, no elemental weaknesses to talk about, so that's good. What else we got here? Uh, Toe Cutter. This one has the Shrapnel ability. Uh, the Shrapnel ability as a uh, we may or may not have seen, but we at least fought the Toe Cutter, is an instant death attack. He absorbs ice, he is weak to fire and wind, and has instant death protection. I guess if it doesn't do uh, instant death, it does damage, so that's always nice. Kind of like the uh, chainsaw ability that Edgar has. Now, what else did I get that's useful? Uh, Black Dragon uses Storm. Uh, I can't remember what elemental attack this is, but it hits all enemies, so there's that. Um, let's see, yeah, uh, it has innate seizure, which is kind of a downside, uh, because it's, I'm not sure if it's technically undead, but it's weak to fire and pearl, absorbs poison like any uh, dead or almost dead enemy. And the final one that actually really matters, Prussian. Prussian's pretty powerful, it has access to landslide, Mog's had access to this for a little while. It's non-elemental damage, from what I recall, and there's no elemental weaknesses or status protection associated with the uh, the Prussian, but it's non-elemental damage, it pierces uh, barrier, shell, protect, whatever, and it's just really, really powerful. It's great for single targeting enemies that you're trying to take out, so I would recommend picking up the Prussian for sure, the Tyrannosaur for sure, the Osteosaur, which we've already seen, the other ones don't really matter, but it's nice to have uh, some variety if you're playing around with things. Now, we're gonna come back in here and do some things, but real quick, I neglected to go over this before when we got it, so I'm gonna have to try and find it now. Okay, here we go, we found it. The uh, shield makes you weak to six different elements, can be equipped by everybody. 
takes seven away from all your stats, provides no particular benefit at all, and inflicts the following statuses as soon as you get into battle. Doom, and you're dead. Silence, Berserk, Confusion, and Sap, or the, uh, the seizure status in the Super Nintendo translation. Now, it's a cursed shield. It's absolutely terrible and is by far the worst shield in the entire game. However, if you equip the shield for 256 battles, which you come out the victor, and these are battles that can't be, you know, leaping on the veldt or anything like that, you just have to basically win the fight, then it becomes uncursed. You'll get a message, apparently, and it'll become the Paladin Shield, by far the best shield in the entire game. Now, the thing with the Paladin Shield is it takes far too much to get it, and it's not worth it in the slightest as far as I'm concerning. Paladin Shield does absorb fire, ice, lightning, uh, pearl, nullifies poison, wind, earth, and water, and teaches the Ultima spell at a one times rate. The reason why I'm talking about it is because eh, there's no way in hell I'm ever going to get it. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's way too powerful, takes way too long to get, and I am not going to do it. However, there is a unique aspect to the shield if you do want to take advantage of it. If you equip the shield in battle, as opposed to outside of battle, it applies the, uh, the check mark in the code wherever it needs to check it. And it triggers the immunity of being inflicted or unafflicted with all of those statuses. So if you equip it in battle, you'll become immune to instant death as well as a bunch of other things. It's not really worth it. It's another bug in this super buggy game, but uh, it's at least an interesting idea if you happen to uh, run into that situation. While we're in the menu, I want to go over this real quick here. Where is my Atma weapon? The Atma weapon grows stronger as HP increases. We're finally getting a decent enough amount of HP where it can actually be a viable uh, source of damage now. So you can equip it on either Terra or Celeste. Uh, Locke's probably better off with uh, uh, the Valiant Knife right now, but you could also give him the Atma weapon as well. Either one will work just fine. It's actually a decent source of damage at this point. So just gonna let you guys know that you can go ahead and equip that. And finally, the other things that I've been forgetting to talk about, Phoenix. Yeah, it's, I'm guessing it casts life on the party, maybe. Anyway, it is the, I believe the only place in the game where you can learn the life three spell. I've just equipped it on Celeste while I've been fighting around on the Velt trying to learn all of these rages. Uh, it took me a lot longer than it should have and she gained a lot of AP for it. Uh, but you'll want someone to learn Life 3 before, like, one of the last couple of optional dungeons before we head into the, the end of the game here. So someone will have to learn it at some point. It's one of the reasons why I picked up Block early, that, and it gives us Steel. Uh, one final note on the Curse Shield, Gogo cannot equip it to uncurse the shield for some reason. I have no idea why. But if you equip it on him, you will not get things uncursed. Anyway, with that being said, let's go into the Coliseum. Now, we did save somebody last time. Okay, there we go. Finally found it. The uh, striker that we just got. We're going to bet this for a question mark item. Now, it says Shadow or Chupon. The idea here is the first time around, and I believe we talked to this person, but I don't remember. Someone said there's a mean guy at the Coliseum looking for the striker. Well, the mean guy is Shadow, and this is only the case if, uh, you know, you saved Shadow in the first half of the game. If you didn't, then you'll fight Chupon here instead. It doesn't really matter who you bring into this fight. But I'll bring the, uh, you know, the perfect magical evade setup to avoid bad things happening. And he falls down. <laughs> and for defeating Shadow, you get the striker 
back. The only thing I know how to do is fight. Why not come with us? You did once before. Actually, multiple times before. First, I need to see how far I can get here. What do you mean? The translations are wonky. All right, it's time to put my skills to the ultimate test. And with that, we have re-recruited Shadow. Like I said, if you don't save in the first half, Realm is there instead, Shadow is not, and well, you get the Striker, but you don't get anything else out of it. Okay, now that we've done that, let's start grabbing some really nice stuff. So we're going to bet the tabby suit that we got a long time ago. And well, Vector or Vector Dinosaur or something like that, he's not going to survive too long. And he's gone. Weak to ice and water, 2800 HP, um, can use some basic normal attacks and Pearl Wind heal itself. And we get the Chocobo suit for that. So that's a thing, I guess. Next, we're going to bet those chocobo suits to get moogle suits, and in doing so, we're going to have to put shadow to use. The reason why we've had to wait until now in order to bet any of these is because veteran has four attacks, a normal attack, doom, x-zone, and roulette. So everything pretty much is instant death, and we just don't have any way of protecting against that other than perfect, uh, perfect evade or the uh, Memento Ring that only Shadow and Realm can equip. Now, this guy is weak to Poison and Stop, has 10,000 HP, and will take a little while to take down, especially if Shadow's gonna do dumb things instead of attacking. Basically, the rest of this fight is meaningless, so I'm gonna cut most of it out, because it's just gonna take a lot of time. And I will actually, there is one other thing I'll mention before I'll see you in a moment. He only has 300 MP. So if you can make it past uh, some of his spells uh, with Doom costing 35 MP and X Zone costing 53 MP, he can eventually run out. Uh, so you can use, you know, your perfect uh, magical evade setup and get past it that way. Um, but if you don't have that, this is your only other option. I figured I'd show this off since this is at least something different that's not perfect evade. And I've successfully done both of them. Uh, this time I used Celeste and she happened to do two normal attacks. One of them cast the Pearl spell, which did 7,000 damage without a hero ring or E-rings. So yeah, that might be a little bit faster. Um, once you get the Illumina, things just become kind of straightforward and simple. Um, so there's that. All right, now that we have those Moogle suits, let's bet those Moogle suits. There's the Moogle suits. We're gonna bet those for Nutkin suits and we're gonna use Celeste again here. Now, Madame is, well, scary to say the least. One of the most dangerous fights in the game uh, 8,150 HP, susceptible to poison and stop, weak to the poison element, has, well, battle, flare, pearl, and ice three. If attacked, will counter with either cure two, meteor, or nothing. There's nothing you can do about the meteor aspect of things. So there is one way of going about this fight where you'll be absolutely safe. And if you hold the run away feature, well, there goes Meteor. If you hold down run away, she'll never get a turn off, she being Celeste. And all of the other things that she can do is battle, which in the back row isn't going to do a lot. And I have the black belt on to help get additional counters in. Other than that, all they are is spells, which can be bounced off with a wall ring, which I'm currently equipped. This is a slow and cheap way of doing things, but it prevents Celeste from getting a turn in to activate the Meteor counter, which is kind of what we're going for here. You may want to turn up the battle speed for this, but uh, she's got 900 MP, so it's not like she's going to run out of MP for a while. Uh, but yeah, this this is kind of the cheap way of doing things. The other way is just to 
kind of hope against hope that she doesn't cast Meteor and someone defeats her before then. Uh, another good attempt at this fight would be to use uh, the Jumping Dragoon himself, Edgar or Mog. They're both uh, effective ways of doing this. You're not going to counter? Alright, just attack. This is taking way too long. <laughs> I get... I get bored waiting around in these fights. Give it another attack and it's over. That's not helping. But at least it'll absorb uh, a spell if she happens to do something dumb. There we go. Well, yeah. So there's basically a couple different ways that you can go over this fight. I'm going to bet the remaining Moogle suits off screen and I'll see you in a moment. Then, as we saw earlier, we're going to bet all the Nutkin suits in order to get more Genji armor. And then the behemoth suits that we got from the uh, the behemoth king, the senior behemoth, whatever it is, we want to bet those in order to get snow mufflers. And as you can see, we're going to fight outsider again. I've already shown this off. Use sets or in trumps. You could also use perfect evasion with uh, Celeste. That would work too. And just hope that you know you get lucky with instant death, or hopefully you evade everything he does. And yeah, you can use Celeste for it as well. Either one works. The Snow Muffler is the armor that uh, a certain hairy friend of ours came equipped with by default, that being Amaru. It's actually the best armor in the entire game for anyone, except only Amaru, Gaw, and Mog can equip them. So I got two of them in order to set that up. At various points when I have to go back to the Velt, I will make sure to fight the senior behemoth again and get a couple more behemoth suits because those are the ultimate armors for well there's only two people in the game who can equip any of the suit items that we've been getting throughout the game and well we don't have them yet in addition to that there is one other thing I would like to do. Well, well, not one other thing, a couple other things I would like to do. There's a lot of stuff we can bet around here. We got, where is it? The gauntlet a little while back. We don't need that, but another thunder shield couldn't hurt either. Uh, here we want to throw, oh, I forgot to give him the thunder shield prior to this fight. Well, that's probably bad. But yeah, you want to use uh, Dragoon Edgar here with a Thunder Shield, or yeah, with a Thunder Shield and a Red Jacket equipped as well as his Pearl Lance. And that will, uh, that will help out a lot. This guy has 7,500 HP. He is susceptible to poison. And yeah, he can use Gigavolt, which is Bolt. He can Aquake, which is Water and Wind. And then Blaze, which is Fire. So if you have the... Uh, all those things, you basically nullify all the sources of damage he can deal. If you get Pearl to work and it does enough damage, it won't matter anyway because he'll be dead. Yes, okay, perfect. Alright, so we did that to get Thunder Shield. That is good. And a couple more here. Alright, so let's go back to using Setzer here. No, sorry. We're going to go back to using Celeste here and we're going to bet... Where are those imp halberds at? I'm gonna bet a couple of these for a couple of cat hoods, and we're gonna fight Allosaurus. So yeah, Celeste with her perfect evade setup works really well here. Basically, once you get this setup, it works well for any of the fights, but it's just, it makes life so much easier. This guy is Allosaurus. Let me just pull up his information here. There's a reason why I've been cutting around and going into specific sections of the of it, you know, off screen. He's got 3000 HP, susceptible to death and stop, weak to fire and pearl, uh, can use doom, uh, can inflict poison on you. Other than that, nothing too much to worry about. And once you've got two of those cat hoods, we're gonna bet one of them away against the Hoover. And in this particular case, we want to use Setzer. You could use Mog with that new snow muffler if you wanted and a thunder shield and one of those cherub down things for auto float to protect you against everything. You could also just hope against hope and get lucky with instant death working because Hoover has, well, 
this, which is Wind Elemental, does a bunch of damage. We're going to hope for the instant death and move on. Okay, perfect. Uh, his 12,018 HP. I, well, I don't know why any of this is the way it is. He is weak to ice and water, susceptible to poison, death, and stomp. Counterattacks with that uh, sandstorm sometimes, so be careful of that. Um, also has Quake, so you want to be protected against Earth Elemental attacks in here as well. If you give Mog the uh, Snow Muffler, put him in the back row and give him a Thunder Shield and a Cherub down, he's invincible. He, as long as, well, you'll see in a moment, but we got the Merit Award. And, well, there's one more thing to try. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try anyway. Okay, we're going to give it a try one more time. But first, let's go over why this is something we had to wait till now to attempt. Take a look at Mog's defense. The Snow Muffler is by far the best armor in the entire game. Let's take a look at what it does for us. Of course, it's, now it's going to be in a different spot, isn't it? There it is. How cozy. Takes 50% damage from fire, absorbs ice, can only be used by those three, and it just gives you the most defensive any armor in the entire game. It is so, so good and very important if you want to max out defense, because if you max out your defense, put yourself in the back row, then you're basically invulnerable to physical damage. Now, the only question is, does Mog have enough HP to survive this? Let's try and bet that heal rod again. Now, even with the perfect evade setup, there is no way around... Well, I've got a ribbon on to protect against that, but there is no way around trying to... Uh, trying to survive step mine. If he hits you with step mine, it's going to hit regardless. And Mog doesn't have enough HP to survive right now. So this isn't really going to work for him. All right, let's give Celeste an opportunity to do this. Now she should be able to block pretty much any form of damage, um, except, well, step mine just goes through everything. I don't believe he's susceptible to that. He is susceptible to stone and poison, weak to fire and bolt, as I talked about before. Absorbs water. Celeste is going to do absolutely nothing of use in this fight, apparently. He's only got 8,000 HP, so if we can manage to defeat him without taking any damage... There's step mine. If we survive that, we don't. If you survive that, we're good. We need a little more HP. Sadly, the more we move around, the more step mine gets stronger. Okay, we're back, and as you can see, I've made my way down to the area of Miranda. It doesn't matter where you go if you want to do this. The only place it can't be is Thamasa. Now, there is a chance, and you may have seen this earlier in the game, if you rested with Shadow and the party. But there is a chance of seeing one of his dreams. There are... I, I guess technically there would be six of these sequences. Four of them are accessible when Shadow's in the party. One of them we already saw when we brought Shadow back to uh, Thamasa a couple episodes back. And the other one is only viewable by Realm in the situation where you do not save Shadow. And the music is very off-putting. We have Baram and Clyde. Find me here, please. Now, sadly, the text goes automatically. So we're going to rewind a little bit and we're going to pause. Clyde, how could you? I was your partner should be here with me. So the indication here um, from the Game Boy Advance translation is whoever Clyde is killed his partner, Baram. Uh, in the Super Nintendo version, you have no idea what's going on because 
in addition to translating it improperly, they're working around the censorship of death, and nothing really works out very well. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the ones that you get are relatively random. I don't think you get uh, dreams in a specific order. But since we don't get, well, pretty much any characterization for Shadow over the course of the game, other than he's this badass, this is all we get. We get his dreams. Now, he has to be in the party in order for this to work, and it, it is a percent chance of it happening. It doesn't have to happen every time. I'll just keep resting off screen until it eventually works. Oh, well, two in a row. That's not bad. We did it. A million gil. What a blast. Interesting. Apparently, uh, Clyde and Baram are thieves. I would guess, considering how uh, Baram looks. Oh, we can we can skip the uh, dialogue on this one. It's not automatic, of course. Consistency video game. I love it. Guess it's time to change our name. Guess it's time we start thinking of a name. Well, that would make sense. Something more appropriate. All good bandit does or all good bandit. Duos need a name. I couldn't read that for a second. Yeah, I sort of have one in mind. Shadow. Interesting. Well, we already know. Yeah, you'll notice in some of these other translations here, we have Baram and Clyde here. If you look at the fan translation, we have Billy and Clyde. The idea here is it's supposed to be a reference to uh, one of the names, Bonnie and Clyde. And the other one, Billy the Kid, you know, famous outlaws in the American whatever. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about it. All I know is I'm familiar with the names. Great train robbers of the century. Shadow. The Shadow Bandits. So, yeah, we learn little bits about his characterization. I will uh, reference back to the first one we saw. Uh, once we're done looking at the rest of these. Three in a row. Open your eyes. I'm scared. Is this my blood? You're going to be okay. Almost to a town. Baram let his guard down, apparently. Lost too much blood. Gonna slow you down. So apparently they did a heist. Baram got hit, and now he's slowing down Clyde. And Clyde's trying to save him, but... Uh, you have to use your knife. You gotta finish me off. Oh, the guy he wanted to save, his partner. What will they do if you get caught? Do me this favor. Quivering like a little girl. Now, Clyde can't seem to do it. And he left him there either to die or to be caught. So as you can see, we've seen the dreams somewhat out of order here.
And I believe this is the last one. Hey, you all right? There's a dog. We saw you here before. Where am I? Called Thasa. Thama or Tha Sa, depending on which translation. You can kind of see whereabouts this is anyway. It looks pretty familiar if we were here earlier. And with that, that's all there is for Shadow's backstory. Now, the indication here is you kind of have to read between the lines a little bit and gather evidence uh, like Interceptor being kind of very friendly with a certain young girl in a certain village that looked very much like the village we just looked at. The idea here is that Clyde is supposed to be Shadow. Shadow is Clyde, and the idea here is, well, after that train robbery, we saw him in the Phantom Forest, so we're assuming it's a train robbery. They were chased down and his partner, Bram, was uh, hit with something and he was going to die and Shadow abandoned him there because he didn't have it in him to kill his own partner. And the idea here is he later on managed to make his way to Thamasa somehow. I'm not sure how that happened in the... Uh, the world of balance, but it uh, was on an island all to itself. But he made it there, he met a woman, and he met a dog. That dog became Interceptor, that woman became his wife, and that wife eventually gave birth to Realm. Now, it's never spelled out directly, but it's one of those things in a lot of the older uh, RPGs where they don't necessarily spell everything out for the player, and you do have to read a little bit between the lines. But that's why Interceptor, who apparently bites everyone, gets along with Realm so well, because, well... Interceptor remembers, and presumably so does Shadow, but can't bring himself to confront the daughter that he abandoned. Now, I have no idea what happened to Realm's mother, and I would presume that Strago is, uh, you know, Realm's... Now, I've heard different evidence. I've heard some say that uh, Strago is kind of like an adopted grandfather. He kind of adopted her after his, you know, shadow ran, ran out on her. Uh, another way to look at it would be that uh, that would be Realm's mother's father, and that would could be part of it as well but yeah it just kind of depends on how you look at things and it's not spelt out clear enough so you can fiddle around and make your own interpretation on things but yeah that's all for the backstory on shadow next time we've got a whole bunch of new gear a little bit that i would like to show off that we haven't shown off so far we got Genji armors for everyone. I think there's five Genji armors that we need in total. There are seven characters who can equip it. Uh, we're never going to really give it to uh, Celeste or Terra because we have better with the Minerva with all the elemental protection. So we're just going to put it on characters like Shadow. Uh, and well, you can't equip it either, but put it on Shadow and Edgar and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, the cat hood, I believe, is something I'll never be able to find. Well, eventually I found it. Yeah, the cat hood uh, doubles the uh, g gill or GP obtained after battle and reduces elemental damage from six different elements, can only be used by realm. It's pretty much her best piece of headgear in the game. Also gives her a little bit of magic and speed boost as well as some magic block. It's a very nice piece of headgear for her. Might as well get it to her whenever we get around to getting her. It leaves one more item that I haven't talked about yet. And, well, that's the Merit Award. The Merit Award is going to take a while to explain, so that I'm going to save for next time. Hence why I have Gaw and Gogo -Go in the party. Hmm. That's all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.